about to check this one right here. Six point three is on basic loans using compound interest. I'm actually going to do this over two days. It's probably not necessary, but uh, I'm going easy on you guys. So we're going to start looking at loans now. So what a loan is is when you borrow an amount. It's still called the principal, just like before when you put money into the bank, it was called a principal. Well, if you borrow money from the bank or someone else, it's also called a principal. You borrow it from a lender. This is usually the bank and you repay the, the lender the, all the money back plus you have to give them extra and that extra the cost is the interest so most commonly loans use compound interest uh, though simple interest loans do exist and the biggest um, difference between your investment interest and your loan interest is that the loan interest is a lot higher thanks a lot banks uh, and the same two in interest formulas are used as um, we did with investments. So you remember for simple interest, we said that interest was equal to P times R times T, principal times interest rate times time. And you remember for compound interest, it was the total amount is equal to the principal times one plus the uh, interest rate raised to the nth power where n is the number of years or number of compounding periods. Okay so same two formulas are used and the interest can involve regular payments over the term of the loan or it could be a single payment at the end of the term. So it's not as common I'd say but let's say you buy some kind of furniture you don't have enough money to buy it so the uh, furniture store says don't worry about it you can pay us all the money in a year's time but when you pay it in a year's time you not only pay the thousand dollars or whatever for the couch you also pay an extra two hundred dollars at that time that would be where you do the single payment or more commonly you have regular payments over the term of the loan so every month perhaps you pay back some of the loan and you also pay back some of the interest that you're accumulating or that the bank's accumulating I suppose okay the cost of the loan when we talk about the cost of a loan what we're talking about is the total amount of interest charged by the bank or paid by you over the term of the loan um, right that's the good thing about a loan is you uh, don't need to have the money now in order to purchase something the bad part of the loan is there's a cost to it and the cost is the interest you end up paying so let's do a few examples Thomas borrows 7500 from a bank to buy a used car let's do the same thing I did last time do some highlighting so he borrows 7500 from a bank to buy a used car. The bank issuing him the loan charges 8.25% interest per year, compounded monthly. If Thomas makes $175 monthly payments at the end of each month for four years, how much of the loan does he have left to repay? Okay, lots of stuff to put in here. Okay, let's start at the bottom. Uh, end. It says where it's the end of the month, so let's go with that. M make sure, by the way, this this uh, bottom one here, this is the payment, right? This doesn't have to do with the compounding. This has to do with the payment. And it says the payment is at the end of the month, so that looks good. Okay, uh, compounding per year. How many times does it compound per year? Well, it compounds monthly, so that means 12 times per year. How many payments per year? Well, payments is each month, so that's also 12. The future value, that's what we don't know. I'll put question marks there. Okay, the payment, is there a payment? Yes, he makes a $175 monthly payment. Now, that's money going out, right? That's out of his pocket. So this is a negative amount because it's leaving his person. Uh, PV, that stands for present value. So what's the present value? That's like the principal, right? That's 7,500. Now, before what we've been doing with all the investments is we made that amount negative. And the reason was because that was money that was out of your pocket. You're putting it into the bank. But this is money that's in your hands now. You have $7,500. So this is a positive amount. It's kind of backwards than what you'd expect because, you know, you're, you're owing this money. Um, so it's, in a sense, a negative amount. But the way the, the, the TMV solver works here is if it's money in your pocket, it's positive. And this is money in your pocket. Uh, the percentage is 8.25%. And N. Now, I just want to make sure you're clear about this. 
the n value is the number of payments. It's not the number of um, compo compounding periods, it's the number of payments made. So since you're paying monthly and it's over four years, that's four times 12, which is 48. And then what we'll do is we'll use our TI-83, I suppose, use the TMV solver, and we're gonna enter in this information. Okay, here we go. So second finance, we pick number one, and we're ready to go. N is 48, I'm going to the keyboard, 48. The percentage is 8.25. The pre, pre, um, present value is 7,500. The payment is negative, gotta use that button down there, 175. I'll leave that at 0, 12, 12, this should be at end, and it is. I go back up to future value, I hit alpha, I hit enter, and it tells me it's a negative amount, because that's not money in your pocket, that's money that's owing, that's money that has to go out, and the amount is $508.53. So we'll go back here, $508.53. Is our answer. Okay, the next question is when will he finally pay off the loan and what was the cost of the loan? So we want to know when he'll pay off the loan. So what changes here? Well, in this case, we don't know what N is. We don't know how long it's going to take. Most things stay the same. The percentage stays the same. The present value stays the same. The payment stays the same. Whoops, 175. Okay, the future value. Well, if we want to know when it's paid off, what's the future value when it's paid off? The future value would be zero. It's all paid off. There's nothing left. This would still be 12, 12, and n. So we just got to change a couple things there, and we can see how long until um, it's paid off. So let's go back here. We're going to go up, and or we're just going to change this to zero, and then go up to here. You can get rid of it if you want. You don't have to. You can leave it. Um, oh, I put eight there. Now it's zero. So um, this is the one we want to know. So I go alpha enter and I get 50.9 and we're talking about months here so this is 50.9 months but you're not going to pay for part of a month so what that means is 51 months that's the answer to when will he finally pay off the loan now what was the cost of the loan well, remember every month he's paying 175 and he's going to have to pay it 51 times so that's 51 times $175. And if you multiply that out, you get 8925 So is that the cost of the loan? No, that's the cost of the, what's he buying? A car. That's the cost of the car. How do we know what the cost of the, the loan is? Well, that's how much extra he paid, how much interest he paid. So to figure that out, we say, well, he paid 8925 but what he could have paid, if he could have paid the whole thing right at the start, he could have only paid 7500 That would have been great. So the extra amount he paid, that is the cost. That's the, the, the interest he paid. So if we subtract this, you get $1,425. This is the cost of the loan. Or that's the interest he paid, if you want. Okay, you can see why it's so wonderful to be wealthy, not that I have this experience in my life, but imagine being able to go and buy the car. Well, first of all, you probably wouldn't be in a car, buying a car for 7500 but even you are. There's lots of rich people who are known for being stingy, right? So imagine how wonderful it is to be able to go in and buy the car for $7,500. Here you go. Here's my cash. Done. You now own the car outright, opposed to Joe Average, who has to go get a loan, blah, 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 and the poor guy has to pay $1,425 extra for this car, which isn't, isn't a nice car. It's a $7,500 car. Oh, to be rich. The great thing about being rich is it's so much easier to make money, and it's so much easier to avoid paying interest. Dharma applied for a loan to have her basement developed. The contractor, the contractor she hired estimated that it would cost her approximately 13700 to develop the basement. Dharma had already saved $7,000 towards home improvement. She received a loan for the remaining amount and paid it off in four years with payments of $175 made at the end of each month. What was the annual interest rate? That's what we want to know. If the interest was compounded quarterly. Okay, lots of stuff in there again. So let's go at the bottom. Is it Yes, end of the month, so this is good. How often is it compounded? Quarterly. So if it's quarterly, then how many times per year? Four times per year. Uh, how many payments are there? 
uh, well it says the payments are $175 made at the end of each month so that means there's 12 payments uh, the future value we want to know when will it be paid off it will be paid off in four years well if it's paid off that means the future value is zero what's the payment she's making each time $175 and that's money that's leaving her hands so that's negative $175 the pr um, present value careful it's not thirteen thousand seven hundred because it's gonna cost thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars to pay for this but she already has seven thousand saved she's gonna pay off seven thousand dollars right away at the start so that makes it six thousand seven hundred dollars that's the present value for the loan uh, and that's a positive amount because that's the amount of the loan she took and that's money that's now in her hands okay percentage that's what we're trying to find we want to know what's the annual rate of interest so this is question mark and n how long did it take four years right now you got to be careful here is this going to be four times twelve because it says each month here or is it going to be four times four because it says quarterly here remember I'll write it again this n refers to the payments and the number of payments or how often you get payments is each month so this should be four times twelve which is forty eight Okay, let's enter that information in. Here we go, N's 48, I we don't know, uh, present value 6,700, the payment is negative 175, future value 0, payments per year is 12, compounding per year is 4, we go back up to interest because that's what we want to find, and we hit alpha, enter, and if you do that you're going to get 11.67, why don't we round that to 11.7% that's the annual rate of interest and finally bill has been offered the following two loan options for borrowing eight thousand dollars what advice would you give so we gotta do this twice and see which one's better start with option a i guess he can borrow at four point oh six percent interested interest compounded annually and pay off the loan in payments of one thousand eight hundred dollars point oh five at the end of each year so let's start with that uh... end of each year compounding annually so that would be wow if it's compounded annually how many per year just one uh, how many payments per year at the end of each year so also with payments just one uh, final value we want to pay it off so that's going to be zero how much is each, pay each payment uh, the payment is right here 1800.05 and remember your payments are negative so negative 1800.05 uh, your present value is 8,000. That's positive. It's money in your pocket. Uh, the percentage is 4.06. And we want to know how long it would take to pay it off. So this is your question mark. Percentage is 4.06. 8,000. Uh, payment is negative 1,800.05. Such a random amount. Uh, this is zero and then one and then one and this is end and we want to know the end value so I go up here notice I don't even need to get rid of this I just hit alpha and enter and I'm told it's four point nine 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 hey you know what we can call that we can call that five so for option a it is five now five what we're talking about years here because the payments is the um, it's five payments and there's one payment a year so this is five years so if we want to know total how much he's paid it's five times every year he pays one thousand eight hundred point oh five what's with the five cents and so he ends up paying nine thousand dollars and twenty five cents how much interest or what was the cost of this loan well, he could have paid it outright at the start for 8000 So how much extra did he pay? We're going to subtract, right? $1,000.25 is the amount of interest that was paid in option A. Okay, let's go to option B. We'll do option B in blue, I guess. Option B, he can borrow at 4.06% interest, so that's the same. His uh, present value is the same, right? Still has to pay off the $8,000. The payment this time says payments of $3,462. So there's your negative $3,462. Final value is going to be zero again because we want to pay the whole thing off. Now we're going to—it's going to pay off the loan in payments of $3,462 at the end of each week. 
We haven't done this yet. If it's weekly, how many payments per year? How many weeks in a year? 52. So your payments is 52. Compounded weekly as well. So you're also going to have 52 compounding periods. And I believe it says end again. It must. Yes, it says end. So we'll keep this end here. So we got a few things to change. Let's go back and do that. So we'll leave end what it is. Doesn't matter. Uh, that stays the same. That stays the same. This changes. This is now 3462. Uh, and these should be 52, both of these. And then we can go back up to the end, see how long it takes. Remember, we're talking about weeks here. So alpha, enter, and we have 254.9 weeks. 254.9 equals 255 weeks. Uh, back up here, I would, yeah, I did. I wrote five years. Good. So 255 weeks. And each week, how much is he paying each week? He's paying $34.62. Grab your calculator, everyone. If you multiply that out, you'll get $8,828.1 .1, or 10 cents. So how much extra, or what was the interest in this case? Well, again, if he'd bought it outright, he could have gotten it for 8,000. So if you subtract, you get $828.10. That's the interest for option B. Option B is here. So I guess it's really pretty obvious which one's the better option. Option B is the better option. Better. Hey, by the way, um, 255 divided by 52. If you do that, you ended up you end up getting four with the remainder of 47. So that means four years and 47 weeks. So not only is it cheaper, you paid off faster, right? You paid off of about five months faster because this other one was five years. This one was four years and 47 weeks. So definitely better. You get rid of it a little bit faster, just over a month faster, and you pay $172 less. So do your homework before you take out these loans. There might be better options for you out there. Philosophy, possibly speak tongue, eat drums, Abyssinian Street, Baptist, Baptist, and fine linen from the beginning. My practice.